Hello, young soul. Welcome to the Diary of Scares channel. If you're afraid of real and frightening stories, this channel isn't for you. I suggest you leave this video. But if you're not afraid to listen to these horrifying tales of women being pursued, I suggest you subscribe to the channel so you don't miss the upcoming stories. My name is Laura, and I'm here to tell you the scariest and most distressing story of my life. It all began a few weeks ago when I started noticing a constant presence, a shadow always lurking in the darkest corners of my mind. No, it wasn't a supernatural presence, but rather the unsettling feeling of being pursued by someone, by a man whose face I couldn't see, but whose presence I felt like a constant weight on my shoulders. It started with small details, things I easily could have ignored if it weren't for the growing sense of paranoia that settled in my mind. I noticed quick and silent movements out of the corner of my eye, shadows that seemed to shift when I stared at them. Subtle footsteps echoed behind me when I walked home at night, even when I knew I was alone on the deserted street. At first, I tried to convince myself it was just my imagination, that I was exaggerating my concerns, and that there was nothing to fear. But as the days went by, the feeling of being watched, followed, became stronger, more palpable. I could barely sleep at night, the sounds of the city blending with the whispers of paranoia echoing in my ears. My house, a small and modest rooftop in a quiet neighborhood, became my refuge but also my prison. Every shadow, every out-of-place noise made me jump in fright, my heart pounding wildly in my chest. I locked the doors and windows, but it didn't seem enough to ward off the sense of imminent danger that hung over me like a dark cloud. And then things started to get really scary. I began receiving strange phone calls, silent calls that sent shivers down my spine. Sometimes I swore I could hear heavy breathing on the other end of the line, as if someone were watching me, patiently waiting for the right moment to strike. One night, as I was returning home from work, I had the disturbing sensation of being followed. I nervously glanced over my shoulder every few seconds, but there was no one around. The street was deserted except for me and the shadow that seemed to pursue me, always one step behind me always just out of my sight. I quickened my pace, my heart hammering in my chest as I desperately tried to make it home safe and sound. But the shadow persisted following me step by step like a predator lurking for its prey. I could feel its presence behind me, an aura of malice and danger that seemed to envelop my body in a cold embrace. Finally, I reached my rooftop and rushed inside, locking the door behind me with trembling hands. I collapsed on the couch, trembling with fear and exhaustion, as I tried to convince myself that it was all just my hyperactive imagination. But deep down I knew something was terribly wrong, that the shadow stalking me wasn't a product of my imagination, but rather a real and tangible threat. That night I could barely sleep, waking up several times at the slightest noise, convinced that the pursuer was about to attack. Every shadow, every sound out of place made my heart skip a beat, my mind plunging into a whirlwind of fear and desperation. And then one night, the pursuer finally revealed his hidden face. I was lying in bed, trying in vain to fall asleep, when I heard a noise coming from the living room. I got up slowly, my heart pounding hard in my chest, as I approached the slightly open door. What I saw on the other side left me breathless. A man, tall and shadowy, stood in the living room, his face hidden in the shadows. His eyes gleamed with a sinister light as he stared at me, studying me like a predator assesses its prey. I recoiled, my body trembling with fear as he took a step towards me, his face twisting into a cruel smile. He didn't say a word, but I knew what he wanted. Knew he was there to hurt me, to make me pay for the crime of daring to defy him. I ran to the phone, dialing frantically for the police as the pursuer advanced slowly towards me. I could barely speak, my whole body trembling with terror as I begged for help on the other end of the line. But when I looked back into the living room, the pursuer had disappeared as if he had never been there. I was alone in the darkness, my heart still pounding in my chest, my mind spinning in a whirlwind of fear and despair. And so the night passed, but the feeling of being pursued, of being hunted like a helpless prey, never left me. I knew the pursuer was still out there, waiting in the shadows, waiting for the right opportunity to attack. And until he was caught, I would never feel safe again, never have peace of mind. This is my story. The story of a woman pursued by an invisible predator. A man without a face who haunts me day and night. A constant shadow in my life. 
And as I write these words, I know he's still out there, patiently waiting for the chance to find me again, to make me pay for daring to escape from his relentless grasp. My name is Sophia, and I'm here to share a story that has haunted me ever since I began feeling the terrible sensation of being pursued. There are no ghosts or supernatural creatures in this tale, just the sinister presence of a man who follows me like a shadow, always lurking in the darkest corners of my mind. It all began on a damp, chilly autumn night. I was walking home after a long day at work, navigating the deserted streets of the city. The weak, flickering street lamps cast a yellowish light, casting distorted shadows that danced around me. At first, I didn't notice anything wrong. The city was calm, the streets empty and silent. But as I made my way along the familiar path, I began to feel a shiver run down my spine, an unsettling sensation that something was amiss, that I wasn't alone. I nervously glanced over my shoulder every few seconds, but there was no one in sight. However, the feeling persisted, an invisible pressure on my shoulders as if someone were watching me, patiently waiting for the right moment to reveal themselves. I quickened my pace, my mind spinning with fear and paranoia. Every shadow, every out-of-place sound, seemed to conspire against me, feeding my growing sense of terror. I knew I needed to get home as quickly as possible, but the distance seemed to stretch infinitely before me, as if time itself were against me. I finally reached my apartment building and rushed inside, my legs trembling with exhaustion and fear. I hurried up the stairs, my heart pounding uncontrollably in my chest, wondering if the pursuer was right behind me, just waiting for the opportunity to strike. When I reached my apartment and locked the door behind me, a momentary sense of relief washed over me. But soon the fear returned, stronger than ever. I collapsed on the couch, my hands shaking as I tried to calm myself to convince myself that I was safe. But then I heard a sound coming from outside the door. A soft, almost imperceptible sound, but enough to make my heart stop in my chest. I got up slowly, fear gripping me as I approached the door cautiously. And then, without warning, the door swung open revealing the impenetrable darkness of the building's hallway. I took a step back, my mind screaming with terror as I came face to face with my pursuer, a tall, shadowy man whose face I couldn't see in the darkness. He didn't say a word, but I could feel his presence like a dark shadow, enveloping me in its icy embrace. I screamed in terror, but the sound seemed to get lost in the emptiness of the hallway, with no one to hear me, no one to save me. I ran into the apartment and locked the door, tears streaming down my face as I tried desperately to convince myself that it was all just a nightmare, that I would soon wake up in my bed terrified but safe. But when I looked out the window, I saw the face of my pursuer looking up into the darkness of the night, his eyes gleaming with a sinister light. And then I knew there was no escape, that the nightmare was only just beginning, that I was trapped in a deadly game of cat and mouse with a relentless predator who would not rest until he captured me. I trembled with terror as I realized that I wasn't even safe inside my own home. My apartment, once a haven of peace and comfort, had now become a dark prison, surrounded by the sinister presence of my pursuer. I knew I had to do something, to take some desperate measure to escape this deadly trap. With trembling hands, I grabbed my phone and dialed frantically for the police emergency number. Each ring seemed like an eternity as I waited desperately for a response on the other end of the line. Finally. A familiar voice answered, and I poured out my story in a disjointed flow of words, begging for help, begging for salvation. But the voice on the other end of the line was calm and controlled, as if doubting the truthfulness of my account. I insisted, screamed, cried, but nothing seemed to shake the determination of the person on the other end of the line. They told me to stay calm, to lock the doors and windows, and that a patrol car would be sent to check on the situation. I obeyed the instructions, but the feeling of despair continued to grow inside me. I knew I couldn't rely on the police to save me, that I was the only one who could free myself from this living nightmare. I remembered an old friend who lived nearby, and decided to run to their place for help. I hurried down the stairs of the building, my feet pounding on the cold concrete as I fought against the darkness threatening to engulf me. Every shadow, every sudden movement, seemed to be my pursuer closing in, ready to pull me back into the darkness. I ran faster, my breath coming in gasps as I forced myself to keep going, to not give up. Finally, I reached the door of my friend's apartment and knocked frantically, pleading for help, pleading for salvation. 
But there was no answer, only the oppressive silence of the night. I turned to leave, but then I heard the familiar sound of footsteps approaching from behind me. I froze, my heart pounding so loudly that I could hear it echoing in my ears. And then, without warning, a cold, relentless hand wrapped around my wrist, pulling me back with force. It was my old friend. He promptly called the police, but they never found anyone. I still feel his presence to this day, and I've never slept the same way again. My heart pounded erratically as I huddled on the living room couch, trying to find some comfort in the darkness that surrounded me. The feeling of being watched, pursued, consumed me like a sinister shadow that crept into every corner of the empty house. My husband, a night watchman, was absent, and I found myself alone at the mercy of the unknown that seemed to hide in the shadows. The clock on the wall ticked away the hours relentlessly as I found myself immersed in a sea of paranoia and escalating fear. Every out-of-place sound, every fleeting shadow that danced across the room made me shiver with terror, as if danger were lurking, waiting for the right moment to reveal itself. I tried to convince myself that it was just my imagination running wild, a natural reaction to being alone at home during the night. But there was something in the air, something indefinable and terrifying, that prevented me from finding peace, even within my own thoughts. I decided to lock all the doors and windows, in the vain hope of creating a barrier between myself and the danger that seemed to surround me. But every click of the lock was like a beat in my racing heart, a constant reminder of the vulnerability of my situation. As the night wore on, the feeling of being watched intensified, as if the invisible eyes of my pursuer were on me at all times, studying every move, every breath. I felt like a cornered prey awaiting the inevitable moment when the predator would reveal itself. The distant sound of footsteps echoed through the dark hallway, sending shivers down my spine. My muscles tensed with pure fear as I struggled to control my breathing and remain still, as if I could hide from what was pursuing me. Every sound became clearer, closer until I could swear I could feel the sinister presence of my pursuer hovering over me like a cold, relentless shadow. My heart beat so loudly that I feared it could be heard miles away. A sudden noise at the front door made me jump off the couch in a fit of pure panic. My muscles tensed, my eyes fixed on the door, waiting for the moment when it would open to reveal the terror that awaited me on the other side. For an agonizing moment, everything was silent. The air felt heavy, charged with the expectation of the unknown. And then, with a slow, sinister creak, the door opened, revealing the impenetrable darkness outside. My instincts screamed to run, to flee from that accursed place before it was too late. But something held me there, something inescapable that kept me paralyzed, unable to move, to react. And then, he appeared in the doorway, a dark, sinister figure, with eyes that gleamed with a malevolent light. He smiled, a cold, cruel smile that sent shivers down my spine. As he took a step towards me, like a predator preparing to pounce, I screamed, a primal cry of pure terror and despair as he advanced slowly, his footsteps echoing through the hallway like the sound of my own racing heartbeat. I knew there was no escape, that I was doomed to face my fate at the hands of the one who pursued me. With my heart pounding uncontrollably, I backed up until I found the cold, solid wall behind me, my mind screaming for an escape route, for a way to escape from this living nightmare. Every inch he advanced towards me seemed like an eternity of terror, a silent confirmation that my fate was sealed. But then, a flash of lucidity broke through the shadows of my despair. I refused to surrender, to accept my fate at the hands of that monster who pursued me. With a cry of pure defiance, I gathered all my strength and ran towards the back door, determined to fight for my life until the last moment. He followed closely behind, his hands reaching out towards me, but I was determined not to be captured so easily. With a quick movement, I dodged him and flung open the back door with all my might, launching myself out of the house in a desperate race for freedom. The night was dark and silent, but I ran without looking back, my only thought being to escape from that accursed place and never look back. Each step was a struggle against fear and exhaustion, but I knew I couldn't stop. I couldn't give up, not while there was still a chance of survival. Adrenaline pumped through my veins, fueling my determination as I ran aimlessly through the dark forest, guided only by the primal instinct for survival. I didn't know where I was going. I just knew I had to keep running. I had to find help. I had to escape from that hell at any cost. Finally, after an exhausting run that seemed to last an eternity, 
I saw the distant lights of a road, a beacon of hope shining in the dark night horizon. With one last effort, I ran towards the lights, each step bringing me a little closer to safety and salvation. When I finally reached the road, I collapsed to the ground, trembling with exhaustion and relief, tears streaming down my dirty, bruised face. I was free, I was safe, and I would never let the terror of that night haunt my dreams again. As I waited for the help I knew was on the way, I looked back into the darkness of the forest, to the place where my nightmare had begun. I knew the danger was still there, lurking in the shadows, but I wasn't afraid. I had survived the most terrifying night of my life, and nothing could stop me now. I was alive, and that was all that mattered.